affect me like I was like I was doing something that was so disconnected from our culture. And the truth is, is that a lot of people just haven't had that experience. You know, South Asians in Jamaica have had a very different connection and experience with cannabis than South Asians in Fiji, where my family is from. So there are some places where it's still revered and there are some places where it's completely taboo and it's seen as like something very, very destructive. Wow, that's such an interesting change to see. And it really didn't happen over that many years, you know, as it went from sort of this pinnacle of the spiritual world to being like a taboo thing that you kind of can't even bring into a like a temple in San Francisco. Like it's changed so much. And and I know that there's a lot of generations and a lot of cultures where our elders frown upon drug use in general. And I feel like as we see more legalization and we see more products come out maybe it starts to ease that stigma a little bit. Folks start to think of it more like alcohol, like you can use it at the end of the day. Do you guys feel like there's that lifting of stigma in your own communities as well? I think it depends on the work that's being done. Um, And if you're surrounded or exposed to the information and education that's required to pass that learning curve. And so in my immediate household, you know, like Yogi was talking about, it's just, it's the medical experiences that the family had to go through. And so seeing my aunt, deal with her chemo and how opioids didn't help her, but the plant medicine did. My 92-year-old grandma right now for the past three and a half, maybe four years, she's been on a topical that I give her, just a balm for her sciatic pain, for her arthritis. And every night and morning, she rubs it all over her body. And she tells my dad that this is the only medicine that works for me. And so it's amazing. And she knows because she's not getting, you know, that physical, like she's not getting the head high, for example, she's getting localized pain relief, right? Which is amazing. And so I tell my dad, you know, for your blood pressure, for example, you might want to try a tincture in the morning, it might help you, you know, I don't believe in the pharmaceutical industry, because I've litigated against, I'm all about plant medicine. And so I think that showing our elder community and just our community in general about how beneficial this is compared to the side effects of pills and what they do to your body. Because so many people in our community and just the elders in general are on so many different medications and cannabis, maybe it isn't for everybody, but if it is, it can replace a lot of those pills. Um, And it can be just a healthy alternative. And so I think it just starts with education. And for me, it's been the medical side of the plant that's really helped people around me embrace it and really love it. How about you, Yogi? What's your experience been? My experience has been, my family is very religious. And so I tried explaining to them all the medicinal benefits that could come with it. But it wasn't until I really started exploring more of the spiritual and religious roots of the plant that kind of got my family thinking about it. And my grandma using it, of course, but they were still very unsure. Um, And I think that the more education there is on the roots of it, the more that the stigma is being changed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for, for our family, it was really the spiritual roots of it because for them, they're, they're deeply like ingrained in this pharmaceutical industry. They're, they believe that this, like coming from a country where there was no running water, where there's no, you know, where you could die from an infection from a cut, you know, they truly believe in that the pharmaceutical industry is here to help them. And so really like talking to them about how it's connected to Shiva and how it's celebrated in India for Holi and what Bhang is and how it was, how it's like a thousands of years old. It's a, it's related to like one of our stories, one of our ancient stories, which is the Samudra Mantan. And that's like the churning of the cosmic ocean. And it's a story, it's one of the founding stories of how cannabis came to be in our, you know, in our culture. It was literally a gift from from Shiva to to us, to our continent. For health, medicine, wellness? Yeah, for health, for medicine, for wellness. It the, the some stories say that the god of Ayurveda came out with the with a with like a vessel that contained the elixir of immortality, which is what Som is, what Shirali was talking about. And this Som splashed in four different places in the world. And that is how we got cannabis. So that's one of the, one of the stories. That's quite beautiful. That reminds me the other day I was high as a kite and I was reading, (laughs) (laughs) I was reading something about religion and I, it suddenly dawned on me that like the tree of knowledge in the bible that's got to be cannabis right like that's got to be weed yeah 
there's got to be so many references. There's so many references to it. And I think that if I'm not a religious person, I, I would count myself as spiritual. But I think that if you read certain texts in certain ways, you can really see that cannabis has dated back as a root kind of plant that humans rely on across so many different texts. I think it's fascinating. And like you were saying, it's like in different parts of the world as well. Like it, it's become part of spirituality for people across this globe in different ways, which is kind of a nice, beautiful way to bond together. Yeah, definitely. And that's what was important in South Asia too, was there, it wasn't just for the Hindus. You know, there were people of all different religions from all different walks of life who were coming together to celebrate with this plant. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful way to move forward as well, connecting to that spirituality again. A lot of folks, especially during and after the pandemic, found meditation to be very useful. I smoke before every single meditation. That's every morning and every night for me. I make sure I do it at least 15 minutes. I have a little app on my phone that sort of talks me through it. But just that peace that I get from taking the big, deep breath from my bong and exhaling and just like letting the day go, there's something really peaceful about just being with yourself, being with your breath. And having that cannabis sort of enhance the feeling of your body during the whole experience. I just, I love it. So, so what is it that you wanted the Desi Cannabis Collective to do for the world? I guess, why did you, why did you want to start this nonprofit? It was to unite everybody, right? It was to bring us together and to have a commonality because I'm here in New Jersey, Yogi's in California, our other co-founder, Rachna Patel, she's in Texas. We're all three independent um, Indian, women, South Asian women who love the plant. And we've all, you know, on our separate platforms, we've been talking about it. And, you know, I just, I found Yogi, I think, I think on Instagram maybe or LinkedIn and, and Dr. Rachna and, and I remember just sending it out an email and saying, hey, like, I'd love to learn more about you. And then us three connected and we're, and I was like, listen, I have this idea to start, you know, a nonprofit. Um, and I had a name for it with which a guy stole from me. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> which is why the more reason to do this all women led and women founded um, organization. But we, I think we formed it in June. And by September, we got our 501c3 letter. So we're officially a recognized nonprofit. And our really our goal is to um, re-educate reclaim and just restore this plant for, as to, you know, for where it belongs. It belongs on a pedestal um, for all of us, I think. And the goal is to bring other like-minded people, just not only in America, but all over the world who want to come to a safe space. You know, we have a feature that Yogi's been working on, which is coming out, um, not like coming out the closet, but for this, he's especially, you know, coming out to our parents, for example, and to the community. It's a big deal because we've lived in um, the shadows and with the stigma for so long, especially as women who are going to say now, you know, or who smoke cannabis, right? It's like a no-no. And so I think that we just wanted to put ourselves out there and say, listen, we're shameless in our use. This is who we are professionally and personally. And we want to create this collective for everybody to be a part of. And the goal is moving forward to build out our membership and to create, you know, events. And eventually the concept ultimately is to create a safe space. I'll, I'll let Yogi add on that. We want to create a temple where we are able to consume cannabis and really connect to the roots of our culture. So a lot of that has to do with when we go to the temple, a lot of things are segregated. A lot of things are taboo. We mostly learn about just what the books say versus actually putting those those lessons to practice. So we want to create a space where we can practice yoga under the influence of cannabis, where we can have celebrations for Holi and for Shivratri where people can come and enjoy the plant the way that it was meant to be enjoyed, to have gardens where we are growing fruits and vegetables amongst our cannabis so that it heals the community. You know, it's there are places in India called ashrams and ashrams provide housing, they provide food, they provide a place for those who have nowhere to go, like to live. And so that's what we really want to create with the Desi Cannabis Collective is to have temples around the globe where people can come and find shelter, find food, find healing that goes beyond just going in, getting your food and being discharged or like, or just with a temple where you go in, you say your prayer and you just leave. You know, prayer is a, a ritual. It's a, it's something that is like a part of our everyday experiences. And so being able to do those things with cannabis 
is like the goal for our temple. That sounds so beautiful. I can't wait to visit one of those. <laughs> I, uh, I I have a plans in my life to go out to Denver where they have a cannabis church, which I think is, you know, one of the first of like what I hope will be a long range of religious institutions that start to incorporate cannabis into their practice or at least allow people the option to add it to their practice, to their prayers. I know that there was, along with colonization, a lot of ridding of religion from a lot of the world. and. It's just, I think cannabis is another way for a lot of us to reclaim that, to reconnect with those roots um, and to learn about our history. So uh, I want to thank you both so much for shining a light on what that means for your community and for educating us on a bit of the history of hemp and ganja in the South Asian diaspora. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. A huge thanks to our guests, Yogi and Shivrali of the Desi Cannabis Collective. You can find them on Instagram at Desi Cannabis Collective, where you can learn more about the history of ganja and the South Asian community. Next week, we'll hear from Bradford Beckerman of Hennepin's Hemp, a company that is powered by adults with disabilities. I wound up meeting this farming family that I got the dog from. They're old school cannabis people, too. So they're heirloom strains and all this kind of stuff. And they had a proprietary uh, cultivar, which is the 0.3 or less THC, just like the Charlotte's Web kind of story, but in a different form, meaning uh, in this case, I'm, I'm like the Charlotte kind of person, but I already had, my epilepsy hadn't seized really since 05 from marijuana. Follow us on social media at Different Leaf or at Different underscore Leaf. And I'm on social media at Brit the British. Different Leaf the magazine is now on the shelves at more than 1,500 newsstands across the US and Canada. Go to differentleaf.com to buy any of the issues or to find the nearest dispensary or bookstore near you that sells Different Leaf the magazine. That's differentleaf.com. <laughs>